Today we're going to talk about weather-based irrigation controllers. So I've heard about these new controllers. What exactly is a weather-based irrigation controller? Well, a weather-based irrigation controller is also known as an ET or evapotranspiration controller, which is also known as a smart controller, along with other types of smart controllers, soil moisture sensor controllers, and so forth. And an ET-based controller uses weather variables to calculate plant water needs. What is an ET controller? ET is evapotranspiration. It is the plant water use. So weather variables like temperature, relative humidity, and wind speed can be used to calculate ET by a number of different models or, calcul or calculations. How do these weather-based irrigation controllers use ET? Well, ET is either calculated or sent to the controller each day. We're going to get into that in a minute on how each type of controller works. But if the controller has this ET value, think of it as the amount of water that's leaving the landscape on a day-by-day -day basis. So the controller keeps some type of track of that, much as you do with your checkbook and your bank account balance. So a, an ET value is a withdrawal, and a deposit would be irrigation or rainfall. And the ET controller keeps track of that every day, and if it keeps track of that, then it can determine when to irrigate and how much to irrigate. So that's generally how they use ET. Are there different types of controllers? Yes, there are different types of uh, ET controllers, and we're going to look at a couple examples today. The first we're going to look at is a signal-based controller, so-called because the ET is sent, the ET information is sent to that controller uh, by a wireless signal, like a pager. Uh, so that controller receives the ET value from a service provider that uh, uses weather data that are either publicly available or our dedicated weather stations in, say, a certain development or subdivision, for example. And then the, once the controller receives that signal, then it keeps that bank account balance of water in the soil going day by day. And based on the different ways of setting up the controller, you can alter how much water is uh, simulated to come out of that bank account. Is this a subscription-based service? Yes. The weather signal on these signal-based controllers is a service from a service provider, so when that controller is set up, you have to call them and set up the signal to the controller. And associated with that is a typically a monthly or annual subscription fee to receive that signal for the controller. What kind of information would I need to program the controller? You would need to know characteristics of the landscape, some basic things like the type of plants in the various irrigation zones, the type of soils that there are, sand or loamy sand, for example, the type of microclimate, meaning sunny or shady, and also whether there's any slopes or not. So we talked about these settings. How would I put these settings into the controller? Well, let me show you in, on an example signal-based controller. Of course, some of the basic settings like time, date, and that kind of thing have to be programmed into every controller, whether it be a timer or ET controller. Um, but for example, on this one, you can see if you go to program and then start paging through the various settings for station one, which is zone one, sprinkler type and precipitation rate, soil type, with sandy, sandy loam, loam as a few examples of choices. Plant type, cool season turf here, warm season turf, which will be the type of turf grass in our Florida lawns. And then there's combined turf, flowers, trees, and many options for different types of shrubs. Microclimate, sunny all day, sunny part of the day or most of the day, and so forth. So you can pick the sun or amount of sun or shade in the particular zone. And then slope. You can see here 0 to 5 percent and then you can pick higher slopes. So those are the basic settings that many of these controllers are going to have. Some controllers will have most of these settings. Some may not have every one of these exact settings. 
So we've talked about these settings. What does the controller actually do with them? Back to the bank account, or the amount of water in the soil, that ET signal is kind of a, uh, a withdrawal from the bank account or, the, or withdrawal from the water in the soil. But that'll need to be adjusted if you have, let's use an extreme example of full sun to shady all day. Shady all day is not going to need as much water or the withdrawal from that bank account is not going to be, need to be nearly as high as sunny all day, for example. Now we're going to look at the other example, ET controller. What's different about this controller? This controller is a standalone controller, so it uses readings from on-site, and you can see here it has another module uh, attached that it reads weather data, various weather data from, and this is going to vary manufacturer by manufacturer, but this particular manufacturer reads temperature and then calculates ET on-site. And it also in the module has an embedded rain sensor, so if it's raining on-site it shuts down the irrigation system. So what kind of settings do I need to put in this controller? There are a number of settings on this controller as you can see and similar to the other controller it has sprinkler type, plant type, soil type, and if you remember on the other controller there was sand, sandy loam and so forth and this one has sand, loam, and clay. And then there's another setting which most controllers have is they call it more or less but it's also called a percentage adjust where you can tweak the amount of water for each zone depending on site specific variables that aren't necessarily captured on the controller. These ET controllers look great but will they work with my existing irrigation system? Yes they will. As a matter of fact the two examples that we talked about today uh, would replace an existing timer. So they would just replace it and the, the one example that was a standalone controller, the little weather module would need to be mounted outside in an area that uh, uh, is exposed to rain and, and gets good temperature exposure as well. Speaking of replacement, how much will it cost me to replace these? Well costs are changing very rapidly. Um, every day these controllers are getting better and less expensive but generally these controllers are going to cost $400 to $500 for the controller plus installation.